Second stage of labor by Jones HMMBA DMS. This is the time from full cervical dilation to the delivery of the baby. It usually lasts from 30 minutes 45 minutes in prime gravita and 15 minutes 30 minutes in multigravitas. Phases. Second stage of labor is divided into two, two phases. One dot latent phase, this is the time from the full cervical dilatation to the time the presenting part appears on the perineum. Two dot active phase, also known as expulsive or perineal. This is from appearance of the presenting part on the perineum to the tyke the baby is delivered. Signs of second stage. One dot expulsive uterine contractions, this is because these are needed for expulsion of the fetus. 2. Dot rupture of the four waters, this is to give way for passage of the baby. 3. Dot gapping of the anus and re-vagina. Dot, dot, this also allows delivery of the baby. 4. Dot trickle of blood, this is due to some tears made on the vagina by the pressure from the presenting part. Physiology of the second stage of labor. 1. Dot contraction and retraction. The contractions becomes more expulsive and strong. The woman feels the urge to push the baby out due to pressure exerted on the rectum and pelvic floor. The secondary powers come to play. The reflexes may be controlled initially, but become increasingly strong and involuntarily that they can't be controlled. 2. Dot pelvic tissue soft displacement. Anteriorly the bladder goes upwards into the abdomen stretching and thinning the urethra. The advancing presenting part dilates the vagina and may tear it and cause some light bleeding. The perineal area is flattened, stretched and thinned this caused the vaginal wall to be lengthened posteriorly and vagina orifice to be taken upwards. Posteriorly the rectum becomes flattened into the sacral curve and fecal matter is expelled. The anus finally gaps. 3. Dot expulsion of the fetus. The head is seen at the vulva which advances at each contraction and receding between contractions until crowning occurs. The head is then borne by extension shoulders and body follow by the next contractions together with the rest of the amniotic fluid. Management of the second stage of labor. Aims 1. Dot to ensure a live and safe delivery. 2. Dot to prevent complications. Preparation for delivery. Maintain normal room temperature which is warm. Let the woman empty the bladder or pass a catheter if she is unable to pass urine to prevent delay of the second stage and third stage as well as preventing rupturing the bladder. Place the woman in the dorsal position or squatting or position of her chisetto promote descent and are good for pushing. Wash your hands, dry them and open the outer part of the delivery pack. Put on a mask, sterile gown and gloves and complete the preparation of the sterile field. The assistant is responsible for fetal monitoring and maternal welbing, as well as efficiency of the uterine contractions. She should do the observations every five minutes. She should also ensure that the mother maintains a good position and gives clear and helpful instructions. Stand on the right side of the patient. Swab the perineum with antiseptic and place one towel under the woman's buttocks and the other one on the abdomen. Delivery of the head. Place a sterile pad over the perineum and anus using the right hand. Advise the woman to push with each contraction. Watch and control the advance of the fetal head in a downward direction using the left hand so that the smallest diameter presents. Cover the perineum and anus with a sterile pad using the right hand. Decide whether to perform an episiotomy or not. Avoid performing an episiotomy in an HIV-positive woman. The patient should only push when there is a contraction. When the head is crowned, let the woman stop pushing, instead she should pant, so that the head can be delivered slowly to prevent trauma to the head as well as perineal tears. The brow, face and chin are borne by a movement of extension. Check to see if the cord is around the neck. If it is loose, it can be slipped over the shoulders. If it is tight, then apply two artery forceps about 3 cm apart. Hold a swab over the cord, cut and unwind. Clean the baby's eyes and clear baby's airway. Delivery of the shoulders. Allow restitution, the baby will turn to take place. 
Place one hand on each baby's side head and apply gentle downward traction and the anterior shoulder should slip under the symphysis pubis. Once the anterior shoulder is free, carry the baby up towards the mother's abdomen. The posterior shoulder can escape over the perineum and the rest of the body will be borne by lateral flexion. Immediate care of a newborn. Dry the baby. Clamp the cord by applying two artery forceps about 3 cm apart, hold a swab over the cord cut the umbilical cord. Note the time of birth. Show baby to the mother for identification. Administer oxytocin 10U within one minute after childbirth to stimulate uterine contractions. Put identification band on the baby's wrist containing name sex file number date and time of birth and APGAR score. Cover baby in a towel. Weigh the baby. Assess the APGAR score to ascertain the baby's condition. The parameters of respiration, heart rate, muscle tone, reflex, and color are used. The normal range is 710. Put baby on mother's abdomen for bonding. Allow breastfeeding as soon as possible as this also promotes bonding as release of oxytocin that will help contract the uterine muscles. Provide a heater for WAMP. Avoid procedures that will break the baby's skin and mucous membranes e.g. scalp auctioning. Complication that occur during second stage of labor. 1. Antepartum hemorrhage, this is caused usually by placental previa or placental abruption. 2. Perineal tears, this is caused by pressure exerted on the perineum by the presenting part. 3. Fetal distress, this may be due to baby's malpresentations or malposition. 4. Trauma, trauma to the presenting part may be that encephalopelvic disproportion where the head is bigger than the passage. 5. Prolonged second stage of labor, this may be due to a full bladder. 